Hey, how you doing everyone? Welcome back to Big Frog's 4x4. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be modifying these jumper cables. They're zero gauge, I think 20 foot long. What I want to do is cut the jumper cable about 12 inches from the end and install these quick connects on each end because on the front of the Cherokee and soon to be on the back of the Cherokee, I'm going to have a set of these also going to the battery and also for supplying power to the winch front and rear. So I want to be able to plug my jumper cables directly into one of these plugs on the front of the bumper of the Jeep so that it's easier for me to jump people. I don't have to open my hood. I can just plug in the jumper cables directly in behind the bumper here and use the jumper cables. Now the plan is, like I said, I'm going to measure back about 12 inches and then I'm going to install these. Some people solder these onto the cable, but you do not want to do that with a jumper cable and I'm not a big fan of that on anything because if that wire gets hot and hot enough to melt solder you should probably smell it first but then the wire can fall out if you're going to solder it I would at least crimp it and make sure this is crimped on the wire and then solder it but I'm just going to crimp these now this is the tool that I have for crimping these basically it's a hammer strike design put the wire inside of there you set this down in center of the lug, make sure it's straight, and then you hit this with a hammer, make sure this is on something solid, and hit this with a hammer until this is crushing, and it wedges and smashes the wire down inside. Now what I've done is measured 12 inches equally on both sides and marked it with a Sharpie marker. Now I'm going to take a set of bolt cutters. Because these are zero gauge, so it's going to be easier to cut with these. And cut right on my line. Then I'll have to take a utility knife and just trim this back. And you only want to trim it back as far as the deep of this dish. So I'm going to lay this beside it and mark it. Then you want to do that on all four cables. Then we'll trim this back. If you're not very good with a utility knife, you can take a set of side dikes and kind of just cut at the insulation. There you see, you start to expose it. You see, I'm not pinching all the way through the wire. I'm just kind of dragging the blade of the cutter on the insulation. Now, I like to twist my wire as I... Remove the insulation, you can twist it, and it puts a nice twist on the wire as well. You'll make sure all the wire is tucked up in there. Like that. Of course, it's not going to focus. Then I'm going to come down to my crimper and dead center is where I'm going to crimp it at.
This is designed specifically for crimping these wires. All right, I did forget to mention, whenever you do these, make sure they're facing about the same direction so that when you lock them in to this, your cables will lay about the same as well. If you have one of those off, it's going to be all twisted and turned, and that's, you might not be able to wrap them up as well. It's easy to wrap them if everything's crimped straight and the same on both sides. Now, in the ends of these, there's middle metal clips. You can see right there the lock on those lugs we just hammered on. These are also labeled, if I can get this out of the way. Oh, well, here you see, labeled plus and minus. They're also labeled on this side underneath this, plus and minus. Make sure you put the cable in the right way. <clears throat> so... This flat edge on here locks into that metal tab. This is the end that locks into the other lug. So that flat edge has to push and lock into the proper spot. So you want to put them in like this, the flat edge with that little hook on the end. They both go in. And you might have to push hard so that they lock in. All right, they're both locked. You should not, oh, oh, that one didn't lock. You should not be able to pull them out without releasing that tab on the inside. Let's try this one again. Because you crimped them and not soldering them, that may bend back in here a little bit and make them tighter to get in. So I just hit it with a wooden block and they fully seated in and locked in. Like I said, once again, do a tug test. They should not be able to pull out of that plug without taking a flathead screwdriver or pick and pressing down the metal lock tabs underneath these lugs and be able to pull them out. Make sure you buy a set of these that has Covers of some kind on them. That way, no debris or anything gets up in there. And it causes a problem with you plugging it in later. Now, what that leaves us with is a set of jumper cables that you can disconnect like this. But still use it as a regular set of jumper cables. So, when I travel with a different vehicle or whatever I need... I have a good set of heavy-duty jumper cables, and trust me, the only problem I've had with this, this is the cheapest zero-gauge jumper cables I could find on Amazon. The only problem I have is the boots slide off, so up here at the top of the jaw, I just zip-tied them to hold this boot on. That's the only problem I've had. These things have been incredible. I've jump-started the vehicle with no battery in it. The battery's sitting on the ground, just the jumper cables running over to the positive negative wires on the vehicle and started the vehicle in a V8 Chevy with a 350 V8. So, love these jumper cables, but I'm making them more useful. So when I'm in the Jeep, I can disconnect, put my safety plug on this side, and we'll come over here to the Jeep, Back here at the back of the bumper, I have my winch hookup for the cradle. And I have the wire, this wire loom to come around and plugs in. This does not stay in, the, in all the time. I just put the uh, winch in the back of the Jeep and strap it down in the, in the cargo area. So I'm going to set this camera up and show you here. All right, so you can see where the winch plugs in. Back behind the bumper, I just unplug the winch. Like I said, the winch doesn't stay in the Jeep. It only is in there for me to run that wiring and plug. This plug is the same cable that runs up to the battery. And then I can just take my jumper cables and plug them in. And now I can just jump somebody without having to open my hood to the Jeep 
and uh, run to the battery. These cables are heavy gauge that run up to the battery as well. So like I said, my plan is to run this zero gauge wire all the way to the back of the Jeep for hooking up the winch in the back and running the winch and also for running the jumper cables on the back if I want to as well because it'll have the same type of plug on the back bumper as it does the front bumper. So I can unplug the winch or plug in the winch there or plug in and unplug the jumper cables of that same plug. I also want to run my A or B winch off of the power cable that runs to the back. Now, my only question for you guys is, can I use the vehicle as a ground, or should I run a ground wire back as well? I've been told that I should not use the vehicle as a ground because you can get a lot of interference and you're drawing a lot of amperage through a large amount of metal. So you won't get the power draw that you want because you have a large amount of metal pulling amperage. Plus, it could cause ECM and electrical issues when you're pulling like a winch power through your vehicle body as a ground because the vehicle grounds multiple places for different things in the vehicle. So I was told I should run a ground wire from the battery all the way to the back as well. So let me know in the comments down below what you think, if you'd run it off the ground on the vehicle, or if you've run a ground all the way to the back, if you've had any issues. Other than that, hope you enjoyed this video, hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching Big Frogs 4x4, and as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and God bless.